In this video, I'm going to show you how to sound like Kenya Grace. Let's start with the drums first. You want to start by picking a tempo, and liquid DMB is typically around 165 to 174. Now in this instance I've picked 174 as that's the kind of range I'm used to working but feel free to go lower. I believe Kenya Grace uses like 167, 170, that kind of area. So it's worth experimenting with depending on the style of your track and how you think it works with that. So let's start by looking at the drums. So I'm just going to mute everything and then I'll unmute it one by one. So we've got our kick drum here first. And for the first 16 bars, you can see along the top that I've labeled it for you. We've got the intro, the build, drop part one, drop part two, and it's all in 16 bar phrases. So there's nothing that happens for the first bit of the intro, as I didn't feel like it needed anything. And then we introduce our kick drum, and this is like a top highs layer. So if we just play it, you'll hear. It's literally just the highs of a kick drum just to give it a bit more depth. You'll see when I put kick drum 2 on, play it on its own first. Overall, now it sounds a bit more full, the kick drum. Now I've just given it a boost in the G range because this track is actually in G minor, so I'm just giving it a little boost in that frequency. Now these two kicks are grouped together and they're both on mono, which is what this button does. It turns it to mono and then they both do to the kick group, which goes to our drum bus, which then goes to the master. So that is the kick drum done. So for the structure of your kick drum, simply it's a kick drum on the first beat and then on the third beat here, it's like halfway across between three and four. So it sounds like this. And then it literally just repeats these two for the whole thing apart from a gap for the bar before the drop. You'll see it just repeats throughout the whole thing. Now let's add some percussion in. So we've got percussion here, which sounds like this. So what I've done is I've taken a breaks sample, and this is just from a very famous pack. If you don't have it already, it's literally free. You can just type in jungle pack free into Google, and then you go on jungle here, this link here and you can download it for free off this website. Here you go here and it will download it and it's got loads of different break sounds in it. This is one of them. Then I've just chopped it up, taken out the kick drum so it doesn't clash with my kick drum and then it sounds like this. And it's just got an EQ on it, just get bringing out the highs and hiding the lows. And that's how I've got that sound and then later down the line when the drop comes in we'll introduce more elements to make it sound more full. So now let's have a look at that. So we've got a snare drum here, just in the drop. That's part of the build up. And then we come to drop one for the first 16 bars. And we've added another snare. And this sounds like this. So it goes from sounding like this. And the snare is simply hitting on the second and fourth beat throughout. And then you see all these little bits in between in the breaks are just like little hi-hats and percussions to give it movement. And then on top of that, I've added more hi-hats. So if I turn this on, if I turn the hat one on here, this is a hi-hat sample that I've given a pattern. So if we change this to step mode, you can see I've got one halfway between beat one and beat two, one halfway between two and three, and then one on the third one here, and then one halfway between three and four. And then all this just repeats and it sounds like this. Turn this off so you can hear it. And there's like a little hi-hat afterwards here as well. And this is all just adding movement to your track. So let's play it now. And you see if I take one of these away, it just doesn't sound as full anymore and it sounds a bit jolty. See how that sounds a little bit jolty, but then when you add this in, it sounds way better and feels like it's moving. But if I take this away, doesn't sound as full. So now finally, I've got another hi-hat, and this is just a drum loop from my drum and bass collection pack, which is available on my website. So if I play this, it 
that's just adding even more depth to your drums. So now let's continue to drop one part two. And this is the next 16 bars of the drop. And I introduce another element here. And this is just a ride that I found and then I've stretched out. And this hits every single bar. And together it sounds like this. And this sample just sounds like this. And that's really good for when you want to keep the track moving. So it adds movement and feels like the track is progressing. And then I've literally just kept this in for the rest of the track because I felt like it sounded really good and kept the track moving. Because if I'd removed it, it could have brought the energy back down and then it can play tricks on the listener's ear and not sound as good. But I have lowered the sound in the breakdown, so it's a little bit quieter, as you can see here. I've just created a new pattern by going here and make unique. And then it's, I've just lowered it manually. So now let's have a quick look at some of the automation. And I believe the only real automation I've done is just before the drop, I've added a filter like this. So it sounds like this. And that just makes the volume and the EQ of it go down slightly. So it feels like something's coming and then the pre drop happens for one bar where there's no drums playing. And that just, again, gives your track movement and feels like a transition is coming along. So that is the drums done. Now let's have a look at the bass. So this bass is really simple. I found a really cool re-space, which you can see here. Now for the bass, I've got a re-space, which is one of my re-spaces again from the drum and bass collection pack. And let's just play it. And it sounds like this. And then it's got just an EQ effects on. And then if we have a look at the post-processing, there actually isn't any post-processing on it. So let's have a look at the notes it's playing. So what I did to decide on this melody is I actually waited until I had the intro completely down. So I made this re-space and I had a melody originally, but then after I put the instruments in from the intro, I then changed up the melody once I knew what it sounded like before the drop to fit it. And this note, D sharp, that's playing here, felt like it fit it more than just playing a G because it's in G minor at the start, which is what I normally do. And I'll come back to that later on. But yeah, all the post-processing is, is just nothing. A little bit of reverb, because this bass bus gets sent to the reverb channel, which just has a Valhalla on it and EQ. And then it's just my side chain working on this limiter here. The kick is being sent to it and it just... does a little bit of side chain just to help the kick drum push through the mix. So again, it's just a re-space on the drop and it just repeats the same pattern on the first drop and the second drop for the whole 32 bars. So now let's have a look at the instruments. So let's just turn this on. So what I recommend you do for liquid drum and bass is you either use your music theory to create some pads. Now you can do this literally by just Googling stuff, trying out chat GBT, asking it some questions to get it, you to make some, some chord progressions, or you could use Scalar 2, this plugin here, and go for all these and try and find some nice scales in there and chords. And then you can really create a track with that using pads and things. And my How to Wilkinson video goes into a bit more detail about stuff like that. But the alternative is to literally find a sample pack or use Splice and go through some different types of instruments and see what kind of samples they have. Because personally, I can't play the guitar. So what I've done is I've gone on Splice and gone through loads of different guitar samples and I found this one. And then I stretched it to fit my track and it sounds like this. Now to me, that sounds like the perfect kind of opening melody for a Kenya Gray style track. So I've just simply used this because I can't play the guitar this good. Someone else can, and they've allowed me to use their samples. So why not use it if I can make a really good tune with it? So in terms of the other instruments, I've got a pad here that is following the notes of the main bass. And it sounds like this. And with the bass, so this is just a Nexus 4 plugin. If you have a similar kind of plugin, I recommend going through your pads and looking for stuff. 
And with the bass here, it sounds like this. And that just adds layer and depth to your track. Without that, it would sound pretty blunt. Now, further down the line, I've added, I'd call this a lead. Now, I've used Nexus for this as well, but there's lots of good lead samples in Serum or any other kind of synth that you have. So if you don't have Nexus, try some other synths. And if you can't find anything in the synths, again, look on Splice or look through sample packs and take out little bits and little plucks you find and turn them into instruments. So let's have a look at this. So this is in the drop one part two, when the next 16 bars happens, that's when I introduce this new melody, kind of like a counter melody and this keeps the track again progressing and it sounds pretty cool so what i've done initially is i've dragged in the chord progression from here so i've dragged this in copied it across to here and then i've made the melody based around that so it's using the g's d sharps the a sharps the c's as you can see here d sharp d g it's using elements of that plus what's in g sharp and then it make i've made this with it so let me just zoom in for you. And you can see it's following a similar pattern. So we've got A here, B here, and then A again, and then C here, because there's a slight variation. So give it a go, see what you can come up with for your counter melodies. And then in terms of post-processing on this, there's actually quite a lot. There wasn't much on anything else I've shown you so far, apart from this one. So originally it sounds like this. And then I've added this to it. So we've got, let me just turn these on for you. We've got filters. And delay coming in. And EQ. Because we don't want any clashing with the respace that was down there. We've got a little bit of OTT as well, which you can see here. Decapitator, which is adding some saturation, and then another EQ because we've added elements in already, and this may bring back some bass sounds, so we're just getting rid of them again, and then our delay, and we have added some sidechain as well, because we just didn't want any interference with the kick bass. So that is all the instruments done. Now let's have a look at the effects. So I've kept the effects really simple. I've added a static noise, which I'll show you first. And this is just to help the guitar sound more full. So without the static, it sounds like this. And then with the static, which is this, it sounds like this. Can you hear how much of a difference just adding that one little sample does? It's crazy. And then further down the line on the drop, I've just filtered this static out before the drop here. And then I've added like a little down riser thing, which is again from my sample pack, which sounds like that. I'll just turn that off. And then I've got another one below it just to add more depth literally just that and then when the 16 bars over I add a little crescendo thing just to add some variation and then the static comes back in and the beginning of the breakdown and it just repeats itself and then I was a little bit lazy here I found a complete effects chain for an entire track and I just added some sweeps in here so you can just hear it if I just mute just some risers and some risers and you can actually find these on splice you can find like entire track effects buses and you can just drop them in and put them in your track if you're feeling a little bit lazy so that is all the effects done you can see along there and then finally i wanted to go over some vocal bits so of course you're going to have the singing which is going to be the main focus of this now i'm not going to go over that in this video because 
I can't sing like Kenya Grace for obvious reasons. But if you want me to go through a video on that in the future, like how to process them, how to arrange them, how many vocals you need to record, like how many layers you need to do, what ad libs you need to do, let me know in the comments and I can figure something out and I'll make a video on that. But I can still go over the basics of effect using vocals as effects. So we've got this really long atmosphere vocal sample and I've just, this was originally F minor and I've just toned up two semitones and if I play it it sounds like this and this can go on for the entire part of the first half of the drop and then a little bit of the second bit as well and this is going to add some crazy depth to a track that you didn't even know you could and it's literally got no processing on I've just kept it really quiet and then on top of that at the start of each eight bars on the drop I've got this little vocal sample which again has been pitch adjusted, as you can see along here, 200 from F. That's using Splice Bridge, by the way. If you don't know about that, I recommend trying it out. It's pretty cool. It's in the tool section on Splice, on your Splice app. So this is just literally a like a vocal kind of shout thing with loads of decay on it. And it just sounds really cool. And just have that every eight bars. And then on top of that, when the second part of the second drop happens, which is down here, it kind of just sounded the same as the first one. So I wanted to add a little bit of something else. So I just found this cool like vocal atmosphere melody thing on Splice and just dragged it in as well. So it sounds like this. And I thought that added some really cool variation. Just lots of like little things that you wouldn't really know particularly notice but they all when you add them all up it makes the track sound more full so that is everything done on some of the vocals i've taken out some of the lows just so the drop is more impactful but other than that that's pretty much everything covered and with these kind of tracks you don't want to master too loud so in this case i haven't actually done a proper master yet i've just put a pro l on the master but when I came to do this master, I'd probably master it quite quiet compared to like my other usual like heavier music. And this is called a dynamic master and it just sounds more chilled out and it's the kind of vibe that liquid drum and bass has. And again, if you want me to make a video on dynamic mastering, I can also do that. Let me know in the comments if you want to see that. So let me play the track for you now, final version, so you can hear it all. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please leave a like. Make sure to check out my website where there's lots of sample packs and coaching to get your hands on. And I'll see you all in the next one.